Welcome back to Bulgaria and welcome back to Bedin Vidin in our Football Manager 24 Build a Nation Save. Hello guys, welcome back to another episode of our Build a Nation Save here in Bulgaria. As the manager of Bidin Vidin, we have reached the end of the season. Uh, of course, last time out we crashed out the Champions League at the round of 16 yet again. This time again to Man United, uh, second time that they've knocked us out of the Champions League. Uh, we've obviously reached our level in the, the the last 16 of the Champions League and we need to start improving that. Um, it is the end of the season today though, so we're here to have a, a quick review of, uh, of what's actually happened during the season. Uh, and we'll, we'll start off here. Um, again, I, I've not actually had an end of season review come up uh, for us to, to have a look at, so we'll have to make our own. Uh, as you can see, we are the champions again. Uh, we finished on 91 points from our 35 games. Second place, CSK 1948. Uh, it's a little bit of a surprise one there. And in third place is Spartak Varna. Uh, it's actually Levski Sofia, the team who miss out on Europe this season. Uh, so we're getting a good a good mix. It would be nice to see the, the regular uh, Bulgarian teams get in to, to Europe on a regular basis so that we can, you know, we can sort of concentrate on, on just four or five teams where we can build their squads uh, and help us in terms of coefficients in Europe because obviously that is the goal really but uh, yes, yeah, Spartak Varna fantastic season by them Ludogorets Razgrad have, have crept in very very recently they were where Levski were but they've had a, a better championship group than uh, than obviously Levski have in terms of how we've actually done ourselves we, you know it's been, it's been absolutely fantastic we did win the cup again we beat Ludogorets in the final uh, yeah some, some decent results obviously the league was already won by a certain point we started playing the kids we did lose on the final day of the season uh, to CSK 1948 but you can see by the lineup that we've got on it there's a lot of fringe players in there uh, shall we say this was the disappointing thing though obviously like I say but financially we were doing all right you know we've got 20 19 and a half million pounds in the bank wage budgets there you know we have made a loss this season unfortunately but I think there's still some money to come in uh, Really, possibly, I, I'm not quite sure whether we've had it or not. Uh, I think we've actually had it. We've had our coefficient money uh, and stuff like that. So that's that's actually where we are. We're at 19 and a half million pounds. In terms of the club, I've, I've made new kits ready for next season. Uh, so going forward, we're back in our stadium now as well. It's now got a 13,274 capacity, uh, which is fantastic. I do believe that there's, uh, yes, it's already been expanded again, another 3,833 seats, which should be finished in January, but we don't have to move out of the stadium this time. They're just going to close the stand while they do it. Uh, so that will almost take us up to uh, to full capacity uh, once we get those extra seats in. It's currently reduced by 1640, like I say, where they've got the stand closed, but full capacity is 19 and a half thousand people so in a, you know in a couple of seasons we'll, we'll pretty much <laughs> be at max capacity uh, for the stadium uh, which is good in terms of how the squad have actually done themselves top appearances for us this season is Adam Pack Nick Kaufman's had a fantastic season out on loan at CSK 1948 nine goals and 14 assists he's a very good signing is Nick he is continuing to be on loan there next season as well but obviously we're going to look to extend that again if we can keep these players in clubs like CSK uh, and they can do well in Europe, then that's fantastic. Subic has made a lot of appearances for us this season. The one player who I've been trying to replace for a number of seasons, but he just keeps on performing for us. He's done fantastic since we bought him in for less than a million pounds. Uh, 28-year-old Serbian now. It's been a good season for, for some of the players. Baron's had a fantastic season. 24 goals and 11 assists in 39 appearances. Of course, we are going to start getting this, though. They're, they're going to be wanted by particularly the, the, I've had a lot of Saudi Arabian clubs come in uh, and they offer stupid money for in, for wages for the players so keeping the players happy throughout all of that is going to be very very difficult Marcus finishes 19 goals in 30 appearances as well as has, has played particularly well Baba Campore is is the one that I'm pleased to see up on this list he, he really he, he needs to continue to do that uh, shall we say uh, continue going forward so that's the uh, that's the league table guys that's how it finished up um, you know we've got the uh, relegation let's change this to the relegation stage so relegated Ahibar Chernomorvana which is surprising because they've got two of our 
very, very good. They've got a few of our players on loan, to be fair. They've got Matthias Perez, who bangs goals in for fun. I think Javi's one of ours. He is indeed. He's maybe not the best, but he does. He has still played 31 times for them. Suleiman Saar's there, 32 appearances. Again, maybe not quite the best, but in terms of Hildebrandt and Perez playing for them, Hildebrandt's fairly decent. Plays okay for them. Hasn't done this season, though, in terms of... Uh, in terms of the league, they actually... Oh, that's that's for his country. That's uh, under-21 qualifying. But Matthias Perez, I'm quite surprised. With 18 goals. He's only got a 6.81 across the season. 20 years old, so these guys are going to go down into the second tier for next season. They are obviously still on loan for next season there. Um, nice, to be see, nice to see how they've done. Pirin and Blavograd, as we've just seen, are in the playoff. But they are 4-1 up against Botav Raka in that. So does look like they're staying up in terms of the other european qualifier it's going to be locomotive sophia for next season that uh, they are going to be appearing in europe for i think the first time in this save i could be wrong there though um but Barrow have struggled this season you know last season they were in the in the championship group uh but yeah player stats in terms of average rating fernando baron goals is marco tadic of botev plodiv we'll have a look for our first player up there and that is kevin Jeltema. The Dutchman, 19 years old, he's been on loan at uh, Spartak Varna for this season. A big, big reason why they finished in third place is his 19 goals in 29 appearances. Has played absolutely fantastic for them. Uh, and it does, his loan does expire, but we will be looking to extend that uh, if we can. Matthias Perez is there. Then we get the first player who's actually at Bedin, which is Baron. Uh, Chasport is ours. He's on loan at CSK Sofia. 14 goals again for him this season. So the players that we're loaning out are starting... To, to do the business really for uh, for the other clubs. I'm not sure if Salinas is one of ours. No, he's contracted to Barcelona. He's on loan from Barcelona to 1948. Again, that could be the reason why they've done so well in terms of the league. Uh, most clean sheets, Adam Papp, as you'd expect, obviously the team that wins the league. Again, just quickly looking over things because we haven't had a proper season review, but I do get the commercial summary for the season. We do have three new sponsorship deals which are worth £1.2 million a year. Uh, hence the new kits, I've, I've got them in place already. A new Continental competition sponsor, which is worth £600,000 a year. So that's an improvement of £125,000. And you can see that we have made a lot more money in terms of sponsorship this year. Broadcast revenue is down. Uh, not too much, not going to affect us really. But competition prize money, we've made £46 million in competition prize money this year, which is fantastic. And we need to keep doing that. Somehow, Danik is still selling the most shirts for us. Uh, he hasn't really featured as much as he used to for us, shall we say. If we have a look at Danik, uh, he's he's here somewhere. I've, I've possibly gone past him. Uh, let's stick it on the old... Uh, where is he? There he is, Christoph Danik, 33 years old now. Has been a fantastic player for us, but he's only actually made eight league appearances for us this season. He has got 100 overall in his career he still performs very very well for us but obviously we do have better players Sixty thousand pounds signing as well from victoria plagen which is fantastic he's been like i say a, a great servant to the club and he possibly appears he is he's in a favored personnel along with pap and subic syracos is in the icons of course we're in the legends by now uh, that's it in terms of the players from our save uh, yeah so that's the commercial summary, guys. And now, of course, getting into the big one, the one that really matters to this save, and that is the coefficients. This season's been fantastic. As you can see, Bulgaria's moved up two positions to eighth. We've overtaken Belgium and the Netherlands, which is absolutely brilliant. Uh, it's uh, We still get one league phase. You know, we've, we've already discussed over the past couple of seasons, we need to move up to sixth, I believe, for us to get two teams into the league phase, if, if I'm correct in saying that. Uh, sixth place, yes, it's two teams into the league phase with one into the league path. So so we are slowly but surely, you know, getting there. Now we, we, it's, it's a task of chasing down Turkey and Portugal, which we'll have a look at how far behind them and we are. But it's great to have overtaken these two nations. Uh, and obviously we're, we're now into the playoff, I believe, here. A third qualifying round. Uh, so we're, we're getting ever closer to getting teams further into Europe. It's still five places, though, but they are... Well, these are pretty much the same where they are as what they've been. It's, it's in fact, these are... That's the only change. That one there from that one there. That's the only change as things stand at the minute, guys. Above Turkey, we'll get one straight into the Europa League phase, which is good. 
Uh, and above Portugal into sixth place, we start getting more teams into the Champions League. In terms of the actual coefficient points themselves, it's been another good season. We've earned another 15.6 uh, for the season. Uh, ignore this one, it's already sort of ticked over to the next season. But another 15.6, obviously Belgium only with a 9.8 and the Netherlands at 12.1. So we have moved uh, as things stand. We're on 67, Belgium 66, the Netherlands on 62. We're only one and a half coefficient point behind Turkey as things stand. But of course, next season, they are losing a 12.7. We're only losing an 8.3. So as things stand currently, we are set to move above Turkey. We are still quite some distance behind Portugal. They have, obviously, they some of the teams in Portugal are very, very good in Europe. So uh, we do need to start sort of chasing down Portugal, really. I think with Turkey will just come naturally as things go. In terms of the uh, bidding itself, we're up to 16th in Europe in terms of coefficients. Uh, we've had our best season yet, uh, according to this, in terms of coefficient points, uh, which is fantastic. So we're up to 16th. If we have a look at the other Bulgarian teams, because of course, uh, Bulgaria is what matters. I'll get them to the top of the screen so we can see them all. We're in 16th. Ludogorets are back up to 44th. They've moved above uh, Levski again. They've had a decent season. Levski's season... Not so good. CSK 1948, though, have had a fantastic season up in 52nd place. And we'll have a look at how the, the each team has got on uh, themselves individually. We'll start off with ourselves. Of course, we know how we got on uh, straight into the league phase as the champions. It was a very, very good league phase performance. Losing to a Portuguese team, though, is, is not great. Uh, not great at all. A draw with Arsenal was fantastic. Wins over Roma, Olympiacos. Draw with Dortmund and Real Madrid. Absolutely fantastic. Knocked by Leverkusen out of the playoff. 4-1 on aggregate. Unfortunately, we just can't get past Man United. Uh, there's still some very, very good teams that we're struggling with just a little bit. Ludogorets themselves were in Europa League qualifying. They did get through a couple of rounds. Unfortunately, they lost to Dnipro in the playoff, which dropped them into the Conference League phase where it wins over Aston Villa. A draw with uh, this Icelandic team, IA, <laughs> we'll say. Wins over Sheriff Tiraspol, a defeat to a Portuguese team, which is not, again, not great. Uh, wins over Ferenvaros and Shamrock Rovers. Got them through to the round of 16, where they did actually beat IA uh, in both legs. Unfortunately, they knocked out in the quarterfinal by Rosenborg. So, not too bad from Ludogorets. Could be much, much better with the, the quality of the squad that Ludogorets have got. They shouldn't be losing to, to Rosenborg, really. Uh, but, obviously, we'll keep improving that. Levski Sofia had a bit of a poor one, really. They were in the Champions League qualifying. Uh, did get past Rangers and Mulder and Braga, which is good. Got past Braga into the Champions League phase, the full-on league phase. But unfortunately, it's been very, very poor from Levski. They were beaten by Porto. Only picked up two points against Slavia Prague and Marseille. Defeats in all the other games, including to a Dutch nation, uh, a Dutch club, which is, is not great. We need them to be beating the Dutch clubs. I believe I've clicked too far forward for me to, to see how it went. Uh, now you can see that Barcelona did win it over Man United in the final though. Uh, but yeah, that's that's really, really disappointing from a Levski point of view. And of course, they've missed out on Europe for next season as well. So even worse. <laughs> Before we get into CSK 1948, we've had a great season. We'll do Botev Plovdiv. The, obviously, the, the fifth team at the minute, we're not expecting to do fantastically well. They were in Conference League qualifying. They did get past Vikinger. Uh, which is fantastic. Unfortunately, knocked out by Lech Poznan. Uh, so, disappointing from Botev. And on to the, the, the big one, really, uh, which was CSK 1948. They did knock... No, they were knocked out of the Europa League qualifying by Boavista. So, that's disappointing. Which That then dropped them into the Europa Conference League phase. Wins over Viking, Vada Skopje, who sound Croatian? Macedonian. Defeat to RB Salzburg, a win over Zrinski, Mostar, Kapati, defeat to Lech Poznan, unfortunately. But they did get into the round of 16 where they did knock out Sparta Prague. Then they got quarterfinals against Aston Villa and they won both legs of that. That's absolutely brilliant. Made it to the semi-final, a defeat away from home to Basel. A win at home, unfortunately they were knocked out on penalties by Basel uh, who ended up winning the competition. Uh, so, you know, I think the Conference League is the, the real opportunity that we've got of winning uh, a European trophy at the minute. Obviously, we're going to be Champions League pretty much every season. I would expect us to be Champions League every season. 
perhaps it's more difficult for us. CSK are in the Champions League next season. We'll see how they get on. Uh, but yeah, really, really good to get to the semi-finals of a European competition. So that brings us to an end for this season, guys. It has been a, a decent season. We've overtaken two more nations on our quest uh, to become <laughs> the best in Europe, really. Whether we'll get there or not, who knows? We'll, we'll keep going as, as long as we possibly can. Uh, and see how we get on but yeah csk 1948 have really had a good season this season and it's really helped us out we're now chasing down turkey who as things stand uh, looks like we'll naturally get past turkey uh, so we're really chasing the top six now and uh, it's portugal the ones who we're going to be looking out for of course we'll keep an eye on turkey as well but we are looking out for portugal uh, so we're going to go into next season guys where hopefully we as a club can get past the round of 16 in the champions league that would definitely definitely help us out We've now got six FBET League titles, five cups. Uh, so we're moving up those lists as well, five Super Cups as well. But the, it's Europe. It's what it's all about now. We need to keep progressing in Europe. Uh, and we'll be back next season, guys, where hopefully we can do that. Until then, though, guys, thank you very much for watching. It has been another disappointing season from a bidding point of view. Same stage as the last couple of years. But we're going to try our best next season to get past that. And that includes possibly some signings. Uh, and we'll, we'll, we'll sort of see how we get on. I'm not really in the position financially where I can go out and spend money on players who are going to improve us massively. Uh, so I'd rather save the money, invest it in youth, bring some youth through, some more wonder kids really, because uh, we've got a couple kicking about at the minute. Uh, but until then, guys, thank you for watching, and I'll see you in the next episode.